In this video, we will cover analysis of variance, or ANOVA. The analysis of variance is, in many ways, an extension of t-tests. Just as with t-tests, we are comparing the variation between a number of groups to the variation within those groups. However, unlike t-tests, in which we compare two groups, ANOVAs allow us to compare any number of groups. The research hypothesis for an analysis and variance is that the mean of at least two groups differ. The null hypothesis is that the mean of all groups are identical. An analysis of variance does not tell us which groups differ. It simply tells us whether there is any difference between any groups. In order to determine which groups differ, we need to do a multiple comparison of means, which we'll cover after we complete our analysis of variance. For our example, I will use question number 14 from the ANOVA chapter in your textbook, which states, Consider an experiment to determine the effects of alcohol and of marijuana on driving. Five randomly selected subjects are given alcohol to produce legal drunkenness and then are given a simulated driving test, scored from a top score of 10 to a bottom score of 0. Five different randomly selected subjects are given marijuana and then the same driving test. Finally, a control group of five subjects is tested for driving while sober. Given the following driving test scores, test for the significance of differences among means of the following groups, and the data is presented below. In addition to determining our n, or sample size for each group, in this case, five cases per group, I've also calculated the mean for each group using Excel's average function, and you'll notice I also included a blank column between each of the groups. And you'll see why I did that in a moment. The first step in calculating an analysis of variance is to calculate sum of squares. The sum of squares is a type of variation. Your textbook provides two distinct sets of formulas similar to what they did in the measures of variability chapter. On the left, we see the definitional formulas, which emphasize the idea behind each of these sums of squares. And on the right, you see computational formulas. These formulas make it easier to calculate from raw data. In order to be consistent with the step-by-step -step illustration in the textbook, I'll use the computational formulas for the example. One final thing to note is that the total sum of squares, SS total, is equal to the within sum of squares plus the between sum of squares. Therefore, if we calculate any two of these three sums of squares, we can use this formula to determine the third. Because the analysis of variance requires the sum of squares within and the sum of squares between, I will calculate these two sums of squares. First, I'll calculate the within sum of squares. The computational formula requires that we sum the squared individual scores and then subtract the sum of the number of cases in each group times the squared mean of each group. I've already calculated the ends and the means, but I still need to calculate this first term. This is where these blank columns come in. In each of these columns, I will calculate the square of each score. So this column will be the squared alcohol driving scores. This column will be the squared drugged driving scores. And this column will be the squared sober driving scores. So the squared score is simply equal to equal sign, a score, caret, which again is the shift and number six, and two. So three squared is nine. I will then copy this formula into the remaining cells in the column, and then do the same 
for the next two columns. Next, I will sum all of these scores, and I've created a spot on my spreadsheet to indicate those. Using the insert function and selecting sum, I will then select all of the squared alcohol scores, then hold down the control key and select the squared drug scores. and then hold down the control key and select the squared control scores. And you can see it is summing cells C5 to C9, and then a comma, E5 to E9, comma, G5 to G9. And these are the three columns. This gives us a sum squared scores of 352. The sum of squares formula has two distinct terms. As in previous videos, I'm going to calculate each of those separately. This makes it a little bit easier to troubleshoot problems and also has a secondary purpose, which I'll get to momentarily. The first term is simply equal to the sum of squared x's that we just calculated. So I'll type equals and select that cell, and then press enter. The second term is equal to the number of cases in a group times that group's mean squared. And it is the sum of that term for each of the groups. So this equals, for the alcohol group, five times the mean for the alcohol group squared plus the n for the second group, again 5, times the mean of the second group, or 3.6 squared, plus the n for the third group, times the mean for the third group squared. And our sum of squares within is simply the difference between these two terms. So it is equal to the first term minus the second term, which gives us 27.2. Next, we'll calculate the between sum of squares. You'll notice that the first term in the between sum of squares formula is the same as the second term in the within sum of squares formula. So we've already calculated half of this formula. All that we have to do is calculate the second term, which is the total number of cases times the total mean squared. So the first thing we'll do is to calculate the total mean. I have a space for that in my spreadsheet here. We'll use the function average and there are two ways that we can calculate the average. The first is to take the average of the averages. However, this only works if the size of each group is the same. That is, the n for each group is identical. In this case, it is, and this will work. But because it won't always work, I will do the second way, which is to simply select all of the individual scores. So I click and drag the alcohol column, then while holding down the control key, click and drag to select the drugs column, as well as the control column. This gives us an overall mean of 4.27. As I mentioned earlier, the first term is equal to the second term of the sum of squares within formula. The second term is equal to n total, which in parentheses is the sum of each n for each group, times 
the total mean, which we just calculated, squared, or 273. So our sum of squares between is equal to our first term, 325, minus our second term, 273, or 51.7. Now we're about halfway done. The next step is to divide each of our sum of squares by their respective degrees of freedom, which gives us a mean squares. The degree of freedom within is equal to the total number of cases minus k, where k is the number of categories or number of groups. The degree of freedom between is equal to k, again the number of groups, minus 1. So for our degrees of freedom within, it is equal to our total n, which again is simply the sum of the number of cases in each group, minus the number of groups, in this case three, the alcohol group, the marijuana group, and the control group. This is 15 minus 3, or 12. The degrees of freedom between is equal to the number of categories, 3 minus 1, or 2. In order to calculate the mean square, we divide each sum of squared term by its degree of freedom. So for the mean squared within, we type the equal sign, the sum of squares within, divided by the degrees of freedom within, and for the mean squares between, we type equals the sum of squares between divided by the degrees of freedom between. Finally, we calculate an F statistic. This is very similar to a T statistic and it is simply the ratio between the mean squares between and the mean squares within. So equals to mean squares between divided by the mean square within, which gives us an F of 11.4. Now that we have an F value, just as with t-tests, we compare our calculated statistic to a critical value which we obtain from a table in the textbook. Critical F values can be found on page 472 of the textbook, and this is the table for an alpha value of 0 0.05. In order to find our critical F, we need to look at the degrees of freedom for the numerator and the denominator. For analysis of variance, the numerator refers to the degrees of freedom between, and the denominator refers to the degrees of freedom within. I recommend actually making a note in your textbook so that you remember. In our example, the degree of freedom between, or the degrees of freedom for the numerator, is 2, and the degrees of freedom within is 12. If we look at the 2 column, and then look across at 12, we see that we have a critical F of 3.88. Since our obtained or calculated F, 11.4, is larger than the critical value from the table, we reject the null hypothesis, which means that there is a difference or multiple differences between groups, when we reject the null hypothesis, we then have to determine where those differences are. And we do that using something called Tukey's HSD, or Tukey's Honestly Significant Difference. Here's the formula for HSD. This gives us a number that tells us how big the difference between two groups must be in order for that difference to be significant. The only value in this formula that we don't have is Q. Q is also obtained using a table in the back of the textbook. 
in this case, table i. To find our q, we need an alpha, in this case we'll use 0 0.05, a k, which is the number of groups, in this case we had three groups, and the df within, which in our example is 12. For three means, 12 degrees of freedom, at the 0 0.05 level, we have a q of 3.77. So our HSD is equal to Q times the square root SQRT, and then in parentheses, our mean squared within, or 2.27, divided by the number of cases in a single group. In this case, each group has five cases. This gives us an HSD of 2.54. The final step is to determine which groups are different by at least 2.54. For example, if we look at the difference between the alcohol group and the marijuana group, that difference is 3.6 minus 2.4, or 1.2. This is not larger than 2.54, and so there is not a significant difference between the alcohol and marijuana group. If we compare the alcohol group to the control group, the difference is 6.8 minus 2.4, which is 4.4. So there is a significant difference between the control group and the alcohol group. Finally, if we compare the control group to the marijuana group, 6.8 minus 3.6, we obtain a difference of 3.2, which again is larger than our honestly significant difference. And so we can say that there is also a significant difference between the sober group and the group on marijuana. In conclusion, we can reject the null hypothesis of no difference between groups, and using Tukey's HSD, we find that there is a significant difference between the control group and both of the drug groups.